Hello readers, thank you for tuning in for this interview. Today we will be talking about mental health and well-being with the ICHK counseling team. This interview will have questions focused on stress, the importance of mental health, and ICHK's view on mental health. Here with us are Ms. Logis, Ms. Chan, and Ms. Christie. So without further ado, let's get started. The first question is, what are some ways that students can deal with stress? Um, okay, so I would say that one key thing, and these two will add on their thoughts as well, um, is trying to manage situations that could become stressful in the future. So time management, organization, if you're, if you're well organized, you can prevent a lot of stressful situations that end up being a problem in the future. Um, and of course, that's not always possible. I mean, we're human, we can't predict the future. But I do think preventative measures, like being well organized and keeping track of things and coming up with a plan um, can be very beneficial. Um, I guess to add on the part of being preventative, uh, just having a solid routine and having good habits. So making sure you sleep well and making sure that you exercise and everything and additional activities as well. And I think that really just can be anything that you enjoy. Um, you know, I think scientifically there's a lot of research on drawing and painting and I guess that goes into science. But we found exercise as well and like great gratitude, journals, um, yeah, overall just finding something that works for you that you like and keeping a habit of it. And I, I totally agree and also maybe we want to understand what is actually causing the stress. Is it a big problem or is it a small problem? So, and also maybe focus on your own strength when you're trying to deal with it. Everybody experiences stress time to time, and it's not because you are so weak, that's therefore you've got you, you've got this experience. I think it's very important that you focus on your strengths and what you're good at and trying to solve the problem instead of focusing on your weakness. Yeah. So what are some of the ways that ICH can help students deal with this stress? I think actually ICHK is a very like different school compared to maybe a lot of traditional um, school in Hong Kong. Um, so I think it's very important. I, I mean, we do a lot of um, activities such as deep learning, um, that we, we see students as an individual and we don't often, you know, pushing students to learning doesn't just happen in the classroom, but also outside the classroom. So that's why we do a lot of different activities. And through these activities, teacher challenge students and out of their comfort zone and we build resilience in the, through all these activities for our students. Yeah. Um, I agree with Michelle, um, but I would focus more on I think the staff here are very good. Like just the whole pastoral system in itself, you know, like tutors have a very good relationship with the students and um, you know you have the head of here, you have know, as as head of pastoral just um, the system is put in place to make sure that there's a lot of caring and support of adults um, to make sure that students are well understood and if there's any issues that um, they can have somebody speak to and obviously like I'm here as well, I'm here full time. We also have um, Ashima uh, which is here two days a week and Annie is also another counselor who's here once a week. So just have a lot of people here who care about students. Also, I think it's I need to throw in Mr. Newton in there as well because this is his vision, right? Like yeah. it, how he wanted the school to be, um, and I feel like all the staff here is just very aligned with that. Um, and also, it's just how situations are dealt with here. Like we don't need to punish anybody ever, um, and that is something that's been passed down from management onwards. I would say structurally, yes, building upon Christie's answer, um, there are factors in place. Of course, we want students to grow and achieve, and that's part of our mission as a school. But we also want to be there to support students and be flexible with the options that we can offer them and the scaffolding that we can provide to help them achieve, but develop an understanding of what exactly they're capable. And I think um, one more thing that I would like to add is, you know, Mr. Newton actually think it through how he trying to minimize the stress for the students. For example, we don't ask students to come in with full gear of uniform, like ties and, you know, um, or a suit, but um, we only ask us to wear like just one logo top 
Um, and also, he told, when, I, when I first started supporting him, he told me that we don't have alarms. So all the students just looked at the clock, and I think these minimum, like this, this little things, actually helps a lot of reducing the stress at ICK. Yeah. Okay. Also, to add on to that, I agree <laughs> that um, in year seven, eight, nine, you only get secure, not yet secure. And the word yet is very important. It's like you know, it doesn't mean that you're incompetent or like you're unable to ever reach it. It's just that you're not there yet, and you just need a little bit more support. Um, and it's just either. Okay, so third question is why is it important for people to take care of their mental health and how can it benefit their lives? Okay, so your I mean your mental health really is as important as your physical health, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, it impacts upon your relationships with other people, with your family, with your friends, with your co-workers who right now are kind of your fellow students but eventually will become the, your colleagues at work. Um, it impacts upon what you're able to accomplish and the goals you set for yourself. So I think mental health, even though it isn't as visible, maybe, as certain elements of physical health, it's just as important. Yes. So mental health is obviously very important in that, you know, wherever you go, there you are. And that will take up a lot of mental capacity in terms of just being overwhelmed and being stressed and whatnot. So when you do take care of yourself, then everything becomes easier. You have um, more you know, like mental ability to go do your schoolwork. You have more energy to go see your friends um, and hang out with them and whatnot. So I think I really agree with Ms. Lopez and Chris, Ms. Christy about that. And you know, it actually, it really is your physical health as well. It's as much like mm -hmm. as important because there are research saying that you know, if people who experience long-term long -term stress, they end up with um, cardiovascular mm. disease or heart disease. So it's very important that you really take care of yourself. And also think about the people around that is care that that's care about you. Because if you are under some stress, then they probably will worry about you as well. So I think it's not just you, it's about your your mom and dad and you know, and your teachers and your friends as well. So. And I would say there's so much that happens that's outside of our control that mm -hmm. we completely have no control over. And really the only thing we can control is our response. And I think if you're in a place where you have a solid grasp of mental well-being, um, you're, you're better able to deal with things that life throws at you, which it will because that's part of being human. <laughs> So the question for is, is stress always a bad thing or can it have it benefit? I would say my first thought there is that it's a it's a human thing, right? Like it's impossible to lead a life where or very unlikely to lead a life where you aren't facing some sources of stress. Um, I think really it's mostly about how you deal with them. Yeah, but maybe you can expand upon that. I think the right amount is okay. Um, it always challenge you because if you don't have a challenge in your life, your life will be quite boring. <laughs> and also, it's great that you step out of your comfort zone, so you can improve as a, you know your personal quality, and also you, you know what you are actually capable of. And sometimes we don't realize what we're actually capable of until we do it, right? So I think sometimes stress. Right amount of stress is actually good for us, and I mean, it's a you know, it's an experience that, and I think it's very essential that you work under pressure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I completely agree. So I think this is actually one of the theories under the five plus one model um, mm -hmm. by Bakke's zone of proximal development. Yes. Um, so it talks about how much there's like an optimal level of stress, right? And for you to actually grow, you need to be under stress. Otherwise, you're gonna be, there's no motivation, you don't need to do anything. Um, so it, again, that's this trend that it has like an optimal amount, maybe pushing you a little bit, um, but when it gets excessive, that's when you'll burn out and then you won't be able to do anything at all either. So. How is SHP different from other schools when understanding and improving the mental health of students? I did think of the five plus one model also. The fact that it even exists and how um, Mr. Newton does want all the staff to be aware of these things and that's how we're like all the teachers are meant to teach 
pH and like this, the type of language that we use. Um, so yeah, this is actually kind of fun. Uh, when I hear the term growth mindset, I hear it in Mr. Chan's voice. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how often it is used. And I think um, yeah, that's just like a very important element of it. Like other schools don't follow these type of theoretical models. And obviously Mr. Newton had put a lot of thought into this as to why these models specifically. Um, so and also, like, we are actually really lucky because, you know, Hong Kong is like bricks and bricks, but we are in such a therapeutic environment. We've got the trees, we've got the mountains, we've got the, you know, very lovely calm surrounding. So that's why that enabled us to do a lot of different things outside the classroom as well. So, and we often, you know, for instance, out for a walk in, you know, human type, back history, you know, um, I think that through these activities, Again, the students are not always working under a stressful environment. Um, and just one more like extra question. Why do you think the topic of mental health has been brought to the public eye in the last couple of years? I think like, like, like I'm not that old, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think like around 1950s, like I think the, the professionals that is are dealing with the mental health people are only really like psychiatrists and psychologists maybe but you know and, and people often who have mental illness are often just sent into a mental hospital they are just getting like intuitionalized so they don't really get the real support but i think through education the public um at, well is raising the awareness of the public so people are more aware of people who have mental illness. I think in, um, in Asia, um, a, a lot of it is the face thing. So if you have mental illness, it seems like you are ashamed, like you should be ashamed of that, or you know, it's a weakness of you. So, but I think nowadays people are much more understanding and you know, there are more charities and government support for people who have mental illness. And I think the perception in public is much more, you know, understanding about this. Yeah, I think two things that I want to comment on there. One is that we know more now than we did a hundred years ago or before then. Just the technologies that we can now use in terms of like brain mapping and tracking the effects of stress hormones on the body, like that was not possible decades ago, right? Um, so we know more and we know more about the brain and how it works. Also, um, say what you will about the negative effects of celebrity culture on mental health and social media on mental health because they're there. Um, but also, I think we've gone from absolutely knowing nothing to, oh, now we know something about mental health, but it's kind of a taboo subject to now we're more at a place where it can be discussed widely. And part of that is due to the impact of the influence of celebrities who have said, oh, I had depression or I have anxiety or, um, and when people see that, it I think helps open up the, the dialogue more. I completely agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, the only thing I felt like might be, that I can add additionally is, I think often people are afraid to come out their own emotions and their feelings as well. Um, so yes, there's like a guilt, there's a shame, there's like an external component, but there's also an internal component. Like you just don't want to admit to it. Um, but again, I guess the more people talk about it, the things kind of feel like, oh, they're talking about it, maybe I can do it, and all that bad. Um, but yeah, I still feel like it's definitely an uphill battle, and there's still a lot of um, work and like advocacy and stuff like that to be done. Um, but it's obviously a positive trend right now, and other people are being more open about it. So. Thank you very much for your responses, and that wraps up our interview. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.